Hey, this is Timmy G. Welcome to my quick tutorial on how to make a noise sweep in Logic Pro. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make a MIDI track. And I'm going to have a software instrument and pick the ES2. And the first thing we're going to do is go to our um, tutorial settings and go to the analog saw initial setting. And I'm going to do my um, command K to get musical typing up. And for our noise sweep, what we're going to want is our noise generator. So I'm going to open oscillator three because that's where the noise generator is and drag this uh, sawtooth wave down to the noise and then bring this all the way down to oscillator three. And here's what we have so far. And for the noise generator, it doesn't matter what note I play. You can play any note. Um, a couple of other things. Uh, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this to legato. You don't have to, but um, let's say for some reason you had more than one note playing at a time. Legato will make it only play one note at a time. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this um, cutoff to being affected by en the envelope to all the way down. So I'm going to drag it to zero. Another way you could do that is just alt click it. That would get you down to zero too. Um, and the reason I'm going to do this is because we're going to be automating this um, cutoff knob. And if we automate this, but there's it's getting affected by the um, envelope too, then it will affect our sound. So anyway, the next thing we're going to want to do is um, turn the attack down. So right now this is our sound. And it's, it comes in a little uh, too intensely. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit, up about uh, 17, maybe a little more, 20. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my release up. So there's, it's kind of kind of like a reverb. We're going to actually end up adding reverb anyway, but it's kind of like a reverb, as in it doesn't stop right away. So kind of like that, maybe a little more, maybe like 35 for the uh, release. And like I mentioned before, the way we're going to get this noise sweep is we're going to hold um, one note with the noise generator and automate this filter right here. It'll sound like that. But before I do that, I'm going to turn the uh, resonance up a little bit, probably to about 0 0.3, 0 0.33, like a third. And all that's going to do is uh, boost where we are um, moving this automated filter. So um, I'll play what it sounds like right now when, when it's being automated. And you can hear that it has a little bit more energy wherever it's moving. So I'll do it one more time. And if you don't like that sound, you can turn the resonance down to, I don't know, maybe 0.25. Yeah, I'll leave it at 2.5, but it's really up to what you um, want for your noise sweep. Anyway, um, that's about it for uh, the ES2. So I'm going to close this out. The next thing I'm going to do is add an equalizer because um, the higher pitches seem a, a bit too harsh. So I should say the higher frequencies, not pitches, because this is noise. Um, so I'm going to turn those down a little bit um, by using a low pass filter or high cut filter. So I'm going to turn this on right now. And then I'm going to turn the uh, decibels per octave down to six. I'm going to slide this down about right here, maybe 10,000 hertz. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the low cut filter on. And we don't really want the noise interfering with our kick drum or our sub bass. So I'm going to turn it to about uh, 120, 125-ish, something like that. And I'm actually going to turn this down a little bit more, more like 5,000, I think. Or, yeah, 66, like that. Okay, so that's what we have now. So right now we have a mono 
source with our noise um, and to give it a little bit more width in our mix um, I'm going to add uh, some stereo spread so to do that I'm going to go click here and go to imaging right here and then click on stereo spread so this default right here is a bit extreme um, so what I'm going to do is turn this upper interval down to about uh, 16% and then the lower one to about 12%, maybe 10, uh, eight sounds good. And then since we cut off our highest frequencies, I'm gonna move this down to about 10,000. And here's what we get. And I'm, just for comparison, I'm gonna turn this off and hear the original. So we can hear it's much wider. So now I'm gonna close out of this. And the last thing I'm going to add before we start automating is the reverb. So I'm just going to add um, a space designer. That's my favorite uh, reverb plugin in Logic Pro. And then the you can pick whatever reverb uh, you want. You can adjust this however you want. But I'm just going to pick a preset. So large space um, halls. And then I'm going to do bright hall right here. Then I'm going to turn this wetness down to about minus 17 and a half. It just adds a bit more um, size, I'd say, to the sound. And now we're done with that. So now it's time to, to automate. So I'm going to close out of my musical typing. And I'm going to make a new MIDI region by control clicking. Can create empty MIDI region. And I will do this for, this will be an eight measure um, region. And then I double click to get into my note. And once again, it doesn't matter which note I pick. So I'm gonna hit command click to make a new note. And I'm gonna extend this all the way for our eight measures. You can pick whatever measure length you want. And now I'm going to automate this. So in order to automate, I'm gonna hit A, which will, oh, which will get me to my automation screen. And now we're not automating the volume. We're gonna to go to ES2, mix and filters, and then LPF cutoff. This will control that knob that I was um, automating earlier in the video. So right here, if we see it. So right now I'm just moving it and you can hear the sound. So anyway, let's say that our, we wanted to build up to this spot right here, measure five. What I would suggest doing is um, having it equally on both sides of measure five and then building up here and then slowing down after measure five. So I'm gonna click to make a new automation point. I'm gonna zoom in so we can see a little better. An easier way to do that would just be to click on it and then hit the Z key to zoom. And then, so right here's my first point, and here's my second point. So I'm going to drag this up. I'm not going to drag it all the way to uh, 100. I'm going to say about uh, 0 0.79, 0 0.8, uh, because I've, I feel that if I go all the way up to 100, it gets a little too extreme, but I like this at 0 0.79 right here. And then I'm going to drag this down. And here's what it sounds like right now. So if you like that, great, but I'm actually gonna do a little bit more that I think makes it sound a little bit better. So I'm gonna go right here and go to Automation Curve Tool. So I'm gonna Command Click. And I don't, know, I don't know why my screen's being a little glitchy right here, but this is continuing right here. And then I'm gonna round this off. So I'm gonna make this a bit like that say like that and let's hear let's hear how it sounds so 
I'm going to zoom out now. So now that I'm zoomed out, I, uh, I'm going to uh, show you how to make this an audio file if you don't want to have to either automate it every time or just have a um, white noise audio file in your Apple Loops library. So to do that, you just right click and then we'll bounce in place. And then you can normalize it. And you can call this white noise. And this right here is your white noise sound. So if you can solo it. To save this to your Apple Loops library, you right click and then add to Apple Loops library, call it white noise. Um, it's a one shot and you can pick the genre, but I'm not, I'm going to just go to FX and yeah, ambience I'll say, and then I'll hit create to save our white noise as a preset. Make sure that you're on the track right here, go to setting and then save channel strip setting as, and then you can call this white noise tutorial and then click save. But other than that, that's about it. If you like this video or if it helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or video suggestions, be sure to leave a comment. If you want to see more content like this and check out my original music, DJ performances, or DJ tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.